least she's out of the snowfield now. if the weather's good. Um, and then I've got my saw viver, of course. Summit, that peak. Manana. How about a saw viver? Lightest, most energy efficient woods processing tool that I've found so far. When weight is limited, this is what I bring along to get to that. Did you guys catch uh, my Jeremiah Johnson snowshoe backpacking adventure with Allie where I was hacking away at that vertical deadwood, it was like a dead tree, with a spider cohossum forester, that was the blade. And then somewhere along the way, I I just gave up and I go, man, this is just asinine. A waste of time and energy. Yeah, I, I wasn't trying to be funny. That's truly how I feel when I'm trying to hack down a tree with a survival blade. I don't really care how big it is. It is a tremendous expense of energy and time. It's shock and all that other, other stuff I've said to your arms. The only reason I really do it is so I can test the blades. And perhaps test their chopping performance. But after I got to that point with that piece of wood, I broke out my tried and proven go-to system for falling trees, the saw viver. The trailblazer saw viver, I guess is what it's called nowadays. This one has seen so many trips before and during the Nut and Fancy project and it's been on my list to do a formal tabletop review on this device for years. I was clicking around the internet last night, ran into, I think it was Trailblazer's website, hope it was, and they have my kind of impromptu field review on the Saw Viver. And I think I owe it to this device, I owe it to a company that continues to produce this amazing backpacking saw, a dedicated tabletop review. And here it is, nut and fancy style. Thanks guys for watching the video. All the support, the friendship, you guys rock. And so does this backpacking saw. There's so much to discuss really when we're talking about firecraft, staying warm and comfortable in the wilderness. A lot of which I think I covered in my why big knives don't suck philosophy video. Now there's lots of ways we can make a fire. It becomes exponentially difficult, or I should say more difficult, when the weather goes bad. And in my environments, usually that means high winds, driving rains, snow. And making a fire in those situations is tough. It's, it's not easy. And a lot uh, through the years here in the Nut Fancy Project, occasionally I'll read a comment if someone goes, well, why don't you just do this? Why don't you just grab sticks? Why don't you do it this way? You save a lot of time and energy doing it. And Honestly, I think it's those people that perhaps haven't made a fire in those, those situations because most of those techniques just will not produce a lasting, underscore lasting fire. It takes work. Like I said in Jeremiah Johnson recently posted uh, actual part one, I, I think it's at least an hour to get your fire to the point where you're going to have one, enough fuel to keep it going, and two, to to do the preparation with moisture soaked wood 
uh, to the point where it becomes self-sustaining. There's that magical phrase again, where the fire can pretty much start eating whatever fuel you throw on it, including wet wood. But it takes a little bit to get it to that point, and the question is, how do we do that? I'm not going to say my system is the best. I'm just going to say it's worked for me so many years, to the point I don't want to vary it. And when I'm talking about the saw viver backpacking saw, I'm talking about a man portable cutting device. Now, if I have pack animals in my expedition unit, whatever it is, I have a snowmobile, I have a motorized transportation, maybe on, heck, I don't know, on a bike somewhere, maybe I can take a different saw. And to me, the saw is my number one way to cross cut a piece of wood up in the wilderness. Now, I have lots of cool axes at this point in the Nut and Fancy project, and they have a lot to offer. This one was seen in use in Moonscape, that series of adventures with my buddy Crockett 20, and it is an outstanding axe. It is a 37 ounce, remember that way, 20 inch Grands Forest Brooks forged axe. It can split wood, it can cross cut, but I will say what I always say, it takes a lot of energy and more time to do so. I don't care what your technique is. And it takes a very stable surface to do it safely. And this is usually why I still to these days, in these days, opt for a backpacking saw. One reason, one of the many reasons, is that this, I have to create a platform, I have to find an area barren of snow where I can really pound on the log to split it or cross cut it. There are some other techniques you can employ. However, I just usually when I'm up there, am so short on TCE, I, I don't want to mess around. Just like you saw when I'm hacking that, that log down, what did I break out? This. Tired of dicking around, I go to my saw viver. This is how you put it together. And I'll try to remember all the points I want to cover on this. It is a rectangular format saw. I didn't raise my camera up so much, so I don't know if I can get it all in frame. You guys have seen it thousands of times. Let me tell you this, by the way. It's a unidirect, I'm sorry, a multi-directional blade. It really doesn't matter which direction you put it on. I'm saying you can flip it over that way or that way. The one I put it on, though, I put my back pin like this. These are your retention pins. And the reason I do that, don't extend it. And I've done this, extend it to that second pin because then it'll get in the way of your adjustment knob. And then I'll come up here and put this one right here. Make this thing as tight as you can, by the way, when you mount that blade. So you put the blade on the pins, just like I did, and then I'm going to start cranking it. I keep a little drop of rim oil on that, not WD-40. Uh, I'll talk about that here in a second. And then really crank it down. That is the saw viver, and there's so many cool things about it. One, I'll talk about the format. Uh, now, people will show up to this video and they'll go, well, I've used a Sven saw for years and I love it. Uh, I think Sven saws, Sven saws rock too. In fact, throughout the 1980s, that was my go-to sawing device. I'm talking a Sven saw, the smaller version. I also have a larger version. I still have them. They're actually in some survival kits, larger survival kits that I have put together. I, I didn't want to dig them out for the video. They're very useful. I do like the rectangular format better. To me, there's less interference when I'm cutting logs. And by the way, I find that spanning a log, heck, you've seen it on video. I don't know, about that big, seven inches, maybe even eight inches wide is, is doable. I won't say it's easy, but it's doable with a saw viver. On their specs, I think they recommend five inch logs or something, but what the heck. And by the way, this is the 15 inch version of the saw viver. They also have an 18 inch version. They're both excellent. I recommend this smaller version. For me and what I do out there and the stuff you've been seeing for years in front of the TMP camera, it has been a great saw. And providing me with all types of fuel and whatever type of other wood I need for my wilderness crafting projects up there. Okay, so this is a 15 inch. I like the rectangular plan form better than the Sven. The Sven is triangular and I find that when I go on deeper cuts, sometimes the nose of the Sven saw just doesn't have the clearance. Still a good saw, but there are two other drawbacks why I stopped using the Sven and I started using the saw viver well over a decade ago. And that is, um, this is lighter. 9.8 ounces naked, and that's with one blade. I recommend you, by the way, just carry one blade, which store very nicely. 
with tension steel uh, retention arms here in the handle, you really don't need to carry two blades up there. Again, if you're on a man portable backpacking hiking system, and then just watch and re replace it when you need to. And with one blade, 9.8 ounces. Now this cover I got many years ago at REI when REI used to carry them, and with that it's 10.5 ounces. So that's one advantage over the Sven saw, and I don't remember the weights exactly on the Sven. I know they're heavier. I know, I know, because I've carried them, and I've weighed them uh, in years past, and it's, it's substantial. It's like four or five ounces, I think, something like that. Here's another reason. Look how compact this carries. I mean, this is the overall length of the saw viver when I put it in my backpack. Okay, remember the weight on that, that awesome Grand Sports Brooks axe. Okay, I ride it on my handles so, so I don't forget when I'm up there. 37 ounces. Now granted, this can't split like an axe can, nor can it do the fine detail work that an axe can, but remember my system with a large format survival knife, preferably full flat ground. And I pretty much have my bases covered with that system, and I will still come under that 37 ounces. So if my if my survival knife, let's say it weighs 18 ounces plus 10 and a half, you know, then I'm what, 39 ounces? Then that's with a heavy knife. If I go with something lighter, maybe a medium sized fixed blade, then I definitely beat that system. I'm talking weight here, specifically weight. It wouldn't matter much, by the way, if it was not an effective cutter. I'm talking the saw viver. If you've never used one, you got to use one because they are amazing in their cutting performance. Now, it's not the only game in town besides the Sven saw. The Sven saw. There's others that many TMPers actually have brought to my attention over the years. One will be the folding saw, and it doesn't really matter what kind it is. It might be the Trailblazer. I think they make a folding saw. Gerber makes one. There's all kinds. I think Buck makes them. I have yet to see a folding saw have the cutting performance of a saw viver. They're usually going to have less aggressive teeth on them and they're going to have a wider kerf which takes more energy to use. I haven't seen one yet that would replace this. For me to get rid of this and go with a folding format saw, again I'm looking at pure first, ki first kind of cool capabilities. Weight, performance, durability. That's what I care about. Performance is the energy quotient. How much energy does it take? Because I want to minimize that. And that will take me to co comparisons to the ultimate survival technology, saber cut, or the chain mate, or any other type of folding emergency saw that uses a chain type of format, like a chainsaw. It's basically a human powered chainsaw. Um, I don't like these either for lots of reasons. Remember, we're trying to minimize energy. And I'm going to assume you're alone up there like you see me on camera sometimes, a lot of times, alone, doing the work. If I have a chainsaw style of pull saw or in any other type, any type of rope saw, I'm going to have to grasp it usually by loops, which I think in extended use will become uncomfortable. And then I'm going to have to get my technique just right and pull. Maybe I'm pulling like that and, and that would actually be pretty decent. I think though over time, and I have used them before, they are going to require more energy. Okay, and it, they just suck with one man. If you have another dude on the other side and you guys are doing it old lumberjack style, he's pulling one side, you're pulling another, I think you can probably rip through some wood pretty good. But they also have a very wide kerf. Remember, it's a chainsaw blade. And that means you're removing a lot of wood, or at least more wood than you would be here. That takes more energy. And also, it's going to bind more than the saw viver. This rarely binds on me. It has a very slick blade, and I told you I'd mention it. I keep it lubricated with WD-40. Not to store it, but up there, take a little can, one of those mini cans of WD, keep your blade sprayed. It'll just shed that sap. And actually, it's recommended also when there's moisture in the wood, which is pretty much all the time. Because that, that moisture will bind on the blade too. It creates more friction. So WD-40, it just cuts so much better than the chainsaw, the chainsaw, the chainsaw style of packable blades. 
Also, I think those ones uh, are not very lightweight. The ones I've seen that are substantial and that can really cut are relatively heavy, some heavier than this. And they rust easier than this, the Sawviver. Check out the construction. I mean, this is basically square aluminum tubing. You have aluminum bra brackets, which are riveted like that. And here's some wear and tear on this one. I don't know if you can see this. I'm going to take the blade off because I want to show you what it'll look like after lots of use, which I've done with this one. I crank it so hard, sometimes I'll bend that rectangular tubing. See that, <laughs> that bend in there? I mean, I worked this sucker up there, and I have. And I'm not going to say a saw viver will never fail on you. I mean, who knows? Maybe one of these will pop out on you. Maybe your pin will pop out on you. These are steel, by the way. I think I read somewhere guy was saying, yeah, those are aluminum. Uh, I don't think so. They might be. I didn't put a magnet on them. But so far, um, they have been ver very durable for me. The only issues that I see with a saw viver that are actually meaningful to any level, at least for me, are one, again, you really got to keep that saw blade tight. Don't mess around with it because if it doesn't, it's going to pop off the pins. And then you've seen me say that on camera. I'll probably say it again as the Jeremiah Johnson actual series of videos keep posting. You'll see it. It's funny. Just keep it cranked. You want this as straight and tight as you can possibly get it in there. That's why I have a little bend in there because I put a lot of tension on it. This handle will get moisture under it. It's you know, rain, snow, and it'll twist and mine shredding a little bit. Sooner or later, I'm going to have to wrap it with something. Maybe, I don't know, athletic tape. I'm usually wearing my working gloves up there, so it's not that huge of a factor. I do like the foam padding on it, though. It makes it more comfortable in use. And I think that's about it. Dude, you just crank it on. And then when I'm done with it, up there in the woods I'm talking, I'll use WD-40 since it is my, I don't know, the lubricant I brought up there for my blades and stuff just to spray it down because if you don't the blade will rust if you just leave it out you can see I have a few rust spots on mine where whatever adventure it might have been uh, I don't know uh, snow cruise or something I got those on there and I find the blades last really long I mean I'll get let me think probably five expeditions out of a blade and those are I don't know two to two-day expeditions, maybe sometimes three-day expedi expeditions. And when you find that you're having to, it takes longer to cut, then it's probably time to upgrade your blade and huck this one, put a new one in. Remember, this is a man portable recommendation. Now, if I have, again, another way to get stuff in there, maybe it's a pack animal of some sort, or if I'm pulling a sled, like you saw in my winter scent series of videos with youth, I bring something like this. This one I've had in the family forever, and it has the same type of cutting performance as a saw viver. Actually, a little bit better. Uh, I don't know the size of this one. I have some bigger ones on the table, and I think this is the one I took on the winter since since expedition. Look at this mamma jamma, 30 inch. What is this? A uh, Baco Force. Bako, I don't even know how you say that. Made in Sweden. This is a rock and saw. It's just heavy. It's big. You know, this is not something I can backpack in. I've got the blade guard on it. But you want to, you know, talk about getting some work done up there. You have a group and you have lots of dudes that can work the blade. You can take it. This is superior to the saw viver, of course. It has to be. It's bigger. It's more capable. And then here comes a 15 inch version right here steel tube framing on these and of course they're big these are very affordable by the way these Baco Force this is a 24 inch one I buy them at a, a th I don't know if Cabell's carries them you might be able to find them on Amazon somewhere but I bought them at Sportsman's Warehouse they had them at, at one time and I just stock up I'm like they're so awesome how about a chainsaw nothing fancy uh, yeah those those are great I guess one I hate hearing chainsaws anywhere around me when I'm in the out of doors. I just do. To me, it's synonymous with the destruction of forest. It is, I hate it. Uh, and it's just, it stinks, it takes gas, it's more complex, and come on man, a little manual labor does not hurt anybody. There you go. For, for backpacking though, you're looking at it. You are looking at it. Paired with a large survival knife, dudes, this is just a rockin' system. That is the Nut and Fancy review, more or less 
finally on tabletop tabletop format on the outstanding trailblazer saw viver backpacking saw i hope they never quit making it see you later